Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets for this meeting? No, we have no regrets for this meeting. Well, perhaps others will join us in progress. Council, do you have any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Uh, could we have a mover and seconder to resolve on the committee of the whole? Councillor Duddick and Councillor Giddings, all in favor? Opposed, if any, uh, that carries and we are resolved in the committee of the whole, which is a relaxed uh, state of rules for council, appropriate for planning matters so that we can hear more fully from the public. And uh, in this form of council, we only need a mover, not a seconder. And the uh, first item is the uh, consent item, extension to draft plan of subdivision approval. In fact, there are three consent items. And um, I understand, Councillor Adams, that you have a proposal for one of them. Yes, regarding item number three. Well, Councillor Adams, would you move all three with whatever change you have in mind? Yes, so with respect to, uh, yes, I will move the uh, items one and two. And with respect to item number three, in front of members of council are revisions to the uh, uh, funding source for the $62,500. In discussion with our staff earlier today, uh, we identified that there's an opportunity to save the taxpayer $62,500 by funding uh, our component of it through development charges. And uh, that's what's being proposed through the memo that's in front of you. So I'd like to move that um, modification to the decision. Thank you very much. It's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen, that councillors don't work on commission. Councillor Elgar. I, I appreciate what, what we're doing. I'm just trying to figure out how does this work. Can we do that with all roads everywhere? Or, uh, like, what makes this one different? This uh, particular component is a widening of uh, Joshua Creek Drive. And so there's an element of capacity increase associated with the project. And so we're able to uh, use DCs on that growth element. It's not just a resurfacing. Would that not have been standard that that would be done? Anyhow, because of growth, we're actually widening the roads? That it would be DCs? Is, are there, were there zero DCs going into it? That was my initial complaint. Thank you. I take it that that's a sound of approval from Councillor Elgar, and I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Okay, that brings us to the confidential consent item, the Ontario Municipal Board Appeal of Minor Variance Application respecting 125 Chartwell Road. Is there a motion? Councillor Giddings, you move the recommendation. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Then we have our public hearing item, the public meeting and recommendation report, housekeeping and technical corrections, zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, Commissioner Closey. Uh, we have a very brief presentation for that item, if you'd like to hear that. Council, are you satisfied with the report or would you like a, a synopsis by, by staff? Sorry. Councillor Elgar. Your Worship, you're talking about the uh, number four? I am. I have a few questions, if I might. Yes, you may. Okay. Um, on page uh, 131 of the bylaw, uh, I note we're, we're switching land to rezone from park to business employment. And I'm just, uh, just wanted to get a little more explanation on that. Uh, Count, uh, Mayor, the, Joe Nethery is here, who can address those questions. Mr. Nethery, good to see you. Conveniently on Joshua's Creek, Creek Drive uh, was designated business employment in the Livable Oakville plan and for uh, the longest of time has had parkway belt zoning on it. Uh, the intent of zoning bylaw 2014 14 was to place all employment lands in an employment lands category, and that is why, the, well, basically the error has been found recently, and that is one of the reasons why this uh, housekeeping amendment has come forward. Uh, with respect to the parkway belt status on the lands, in, in doing some research, either the parkway belt plan never did apply to the subject lands, or they were removed from the parkway belt plan in 1998 uh, as part of a provincially initiated uh, amendment to that plan. So 
uh, if it's outside of the parkway belt plan, the, the urb, it's staff's recommendation to council that the urban, designa the urban designation should apply, and it does, and that the follow-up implementing zoning should uh, come to that property as well. Councillor Elgar, other questions? Uh, yes. Um, I, I noted um, this applies only to the lands south of Dundas and north of 407, correct? Through you, Your Worship, that is correct, yes. And I did notice that there was one property address that is actually north of Dundas. I wonder how did that, what's going on there. Uh, through Your Worship, that property has a, there's a minor variance application. I believe it's at the, the northeast corner of Neagawa and Dundas. Uh, as part of preparing notices for statutory public meetings, there's an obligation for the town to uh, identify all applications within the subject lands. Uh, so because this is a townwide amendment, there's a very long list of applications, and that happened to be one that uh, escaped my filtering. Uh, it's listed in error. The zoning amendment does not apply or affect uh, those lands in question. Okay, that, that's good to hear. I thank you for that. Um, I guess that's all, all the, those are the two main, main questions I had. I'm just asking, going forward, if maybe if we could, as a council, get the, a red line version of what, what is in the bylaw and what it's being changed to, so it highlights, so it's a little easier to find for some of us, anyway. I, I, some of them I had trouble going through it. Um, I, I, one other one is uh, 15.299. where it adds new standard to restore council approved reduced side yards on, de on the developed lots. And, and when I read that, I'm trying to, you know, it's hard to, for me when I read that to know where that might be in Oakville. And I think I know now, but uh, maybe you could explain how, what had happened here. Up through your worship, yes. Uh, we, we'll, we will uh, endeavor as staff to provide uh, more detailed information with future amendments. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Councillor Robinson. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I've talked to different people about this, including Mr. Nethery, and I appreciated that time we had. But Your Worship, I find the thing confusing and difficult to understand, and I don't think it's just me. Uh, I'm just going to use three examples and ask Mr. Nethery three questions, if you don't mind, and that may help me understand the fact that we probably are in good shape here. But Mr. Nethery, could you explain to me, and I'm talking now about the newspaper advertisement, I'm talking about three addresses, and I'm using word one, 2143 Salmon Road, 2371 Sovereign Street, and 450 Savile Crescent. Now, what they're identified as being part of this amendment, what, what, is, what, what, what is it about them that we have to deal with? Uh, through your worship to uh, Councillor Robinson, and sort of uh, pirouetting off of the response I just provided to Councillor Elgar, the, the regulations under the Planning Act specify the content that needs to be provided within the content of a notice uh, for a zoning bylaw amendment. One of those components are active minor variance applications. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what those three variances happen to be about other than I have a, I've been advised by legal services that I have an obligation to make sure that that's specified within the content of the notice itself. Uh, as best as I can tell, the intent is to make sure that if there are applications on those subject lands that people are aware that there may be another process that's going on, it gives us an opportunity to capture that feedback and channel into the right locations. Or if it's on a site-specific basis, if somebody's filing multiple applications, the laundry list begins to pile up that people are aware of. Uh, as the amendment relates to the to those three properties, and in fact all of the properties yeah. except for the one uh, in the notice. Uh, some of these amendments do apply on a town-wide basis to general provisions and zone standards. So the applicable provisions and regulations will be tweaked somewhat as they apply on those particular properties. Are, are we making work for ourselves? Are we doing too much? Uh, through, your wor through your worship to Councillor Robinson, we're basically doing what the province asks us to do with respect to a level of service and care to provide to our residents. Well, that's good to hear, and then I, I, I knew you did that anyway, but I, I appreciate your response. I just found it uh, extremely time-consuming, and I'm sure you did too, and uh, I'm going to support it, your worship, without any problem. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Councillor Duddick? 
Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as building on what Councillor Robinson had uh, raised, I know that both Councillor DeMoff and myself were in touch with you in regards to property that we have on Rebecca Street. And I think at that point you had very kindly said to us that maybe going forward we can have something whereby we may either denote the reason why those addresses are being provided in the context. like Because the average person looking at it thinks, oh, there's a revised application, and they don't understand the rationale behind your having to include those in the text? Uh, to your worship, I've actually had a number of conversations with, with individual members of council as a result of, of this particular notice, and it's all considered as valuable feedback uh, on a go-forward basis for staff. Thank you, Mr. Nethery. Thank you, Councillor Duddeck. Is there a motion? Councillor Robinson moves the recommendation. All the, I beg your pardon? Are there any members of the public with information for council on this item? Madam Clerk, I see none. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? It is adopted. That brings us to item number five, which is the recommendation report on the Chisholm Public School. And Commissioner? We have Leslie Gilwoods for the presentation. Ms. Goods, we look forward to your information. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor Burton and members of council. The report for this item is on page 27 of tonight's agenda. Staff is recommending approval of planning applications that would allow the redevelopment of the town-owned property at 165 Charnwood Drive in Ward 3. This 1.5 hectare site is immediately south of Charnwood Park on the east side of Charnwood Drive. As you know, the town purchased the site from the Halton District School Board in April 2012 to have greater control over the future use of the site. And various land use options were evaluated through the South Central Public Land Use Study. In April 2013, at the conclusion of that study, Council endorsed the land use options the land use option shown on the left, and directed the staff to proceed with the necessary implementation steps. Earlier this year, applications for official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and draft plan of subdivision were submitted to allow the proposed development shown on the right, which includes a cul-de-sac and nine lots for detached dwellings, an expansion to Charnwood Park, including the existing playground, and an extension to the existing walkway connection to Bonnie Lynn Court. A public information meeting was held on March 3rd and the statutory public meeting was held on May 11th. The issues raised through the public consultation are addressed by the staff report and where appropriate by the recommended amendments and conditions of draft approval. I can answer any questions on these matters at the end of my presentation. In terms of the official plan, while the proposed development meets the intent of the Livable Oakville Plan, an official plan amendment is proposed to explicitly permit it. The proposed official plan amendment would remove the RL1-0 special policy area designation. It would redesignate the existing forested area and playground, known as Block 10, as parks and open space, and establish a site-specific exception policy for the remainder of the site to permit only detached dwellings and limit density to a maximum of 10 units per site hectare. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment would apply RL2-0 zone regulations to the residential portion of the site and the 01 park zoning to the portion to be added to Charnwood Park. The proposed development implements Council's direction at the conclusion of the South Central Public Land Study. It is consistent with the Livable Oakville Plan and it represents good planning. The existing forested area and playground would be retained and the low density residential development would be compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. In addition, the proposed amendments would permit only the proposed subdivision. As such, it is recommended that the applications be approved and that bylaws 2015-066 and 067 be passed. 
Thank you. Thank very, you. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, do you have questions? Councilor Giddings. Thanks so much for your work on this. I know it's been a long process. Um, no problem moving uh, the staff report. A couple of questions. It's, it, uh, we have Joshua Creek with us this evening, or one of the members anyway. Uh, demolition will be, it's imminent in terms of the school property, I understand. Through you, Mayor Burton, to the Councillor, yes, that's my understanding as well. And later on this year, the, uh, the report talks about coming back later in the year. Uh, one of the things that we're thrilled about is the site-specific policy limiting to detached homes, and the report's quite detailed in terms of what will be allowed and the sureties that we're able to offer the residents in the area. Uh, timing on that, uh, this fall, I take it, in terms of coming back, putting the for sale sign up, as it were? Oh. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, Commissioner Closey will answer that question. Yes, we expect to be reporting back in the fall on the disposition. Um, uh, the report sets out some of the options that we're looking at. Um, the work that Council has recently initiated with the uh, other lands in the town will certainly help us inform uh, the best way to dispose of it. And it is the last piece that I think provides that certainty that Council's looking for in terms of the long-term development of the site. No, and, that's, and that's very much appreciated. Um, uh, members of the association and Councillor Hutchins and I walked the site with Mr. Lambert. We saved a few more trees we were thrilled about. I guess the only question that uh, uh, we talk about localized on-site ponding and we're going to have the road go south to north to make use of our existing catch basins and so on. You're, uh, Mr. Lambert, you're comfortable that we'll be able to mitigate any possibilities in there? Through you, Your Worship, absolutely. Great to hear. <laughs> I'm happy to move the staff report, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Are there members of the public with information for Council on this matter? Yes, sir, would you come up and introduce yourself and share your information? Uh, good evening. My name is Jeff Hall. I'm a resident on Bonnie Lynn, directly behind the site. Uh, I looked in the Appendix A conditions of draft plan approval, and I didn't see anything in there that, uh, as a as a requirement for registration uh, of the uh, eventual lots that get built, uh, that the elevations that are shown in the engineering studies that have already been produced are adhered to, so that there's no water that drains onto the uh, adjacent homeowner sites. I can read and I can see where the town's protecting itself in terms of overflows and, and overcapacity of the town drainage system, but I don't see anything in the conditions of registration uh, that look after the interests of the residents to make sure that as a function of registration that there's no drainage uh, onto um, uh, the residents' properties. And in fact, I can't find any reference uh, where it says that they have to, whoever develops this, has to in fact respect the elevations that are on the engineering drawings. Staff, uh, starting with the commissioner, could you, thank you for your question, sir. Let me see what kind of answer staff can get you. I think actually Darnell Lambert's probably the best to answer that question. Where you go, Darnell. Through you, your worship. Certainly at the draft plan approval stage, there's a functional servicing plan that accompanies the, this approval this evening, but there's still a full detailed engineering plan approval to go through, um, and they would be required to respect the adjoining properties and how they drain today. Currently, they drain onto the school lands, and in the future when these become residential lots, they will continue to drain onto these residential lots and be caught by a drainage swale and tied into the whole uh, stormwater plan for this area. So let me pursue that just a bit, because uh, we've got some history with swales and the behavior of people who buy a home with a swale, and then for whatever reason, be it a swimming pool or whatever capricious piece of landscaping, we, we get issues. What, what could we add to this resolution to give comfort to the surrounding residents that their drainage concerns will be, in fact, looked after. Maybe you and Ms. Weiss could confer on some kind of comfort clause. 
Councillor Demoff. Mine was the same question, actually, to do with the swales. So okay, <laughs> you've, you. you've looked after it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, while you work on that, I'm going to ask if Michael Mulroy is here and invite you up to share your information with Council. Thank you, Mayor Burton. My name is Michael Mulroy. I'm a member of the board of the Joshua Creek uh, Residents Association, and my remarks today are on behalf of the um, association, uh, Mayor Burton and members of Council through Mayor Burton. Um, the Chisholm School Land does fall within the boundaries of uh, the Joshua Creek Residents Association, JCRA. We've participated in the public meetings and provided written submissions regarding um, the JCRA uh, residents' concerns uh, from the applications before you this evening. Um, I'm glad to report that I'm really here as a courtesy to say that we are here to acknowledge the hard work done uh, and to address our concerns, and we're satisfied with the planning um, report in general. Uh, we want to acknowledge that, you know, Leslie Gill Woods has certainly summarized in the report uh, the residents' concerns, which were essentially four. Um, the number of homes to be built at nine and be detached um, and uh, compatible with the surrounding neighborhood, and the report fully addresses all the assurances and plans that are uh, being uh, proposed and recommended to achieve that. We're satisfied with that. On drainage, um, we do need the drainage to be effective. The plan, um, as you know, Mr. Hall has just commented, there is a concern about the, the existing, uh, even the existing site condition creates drainage problems so that the proposed development uh, is anticipated to create even further problems. So. I'll leave my comments just at that very simple statement because this matter, I, I'm sure, is going to be addressed. To, and the report certainly does give a lot of assurance that this can be achieved. Uh, we just note that it is a major concern. Uh, the other concern is uh, tree preservation. Um, and as uh, Council I mean, uh, Giddings and um, Hutchins indicated, we did walk the property and we see that the refined tree plan does address um, some further saving of trees. And um, again, our uh, simple message is we, we certainly ask the town to continue um, its efforts to um, make sure that the trees that can be transplanted are, and the trees be left on the site uh, with tree protection boundaries for, and the hopes that the new owners will uh, build around them. Uh, the fourth concern was walkway safety, and the plan uh, seems to provide us with reasonable assurance there's going to be lighting at both ends, and even further options are being explored. Um, and finally, we, we do applaud the town on its uh, pursuing uh, the best site disposition options so that this development does become a reality as we understand it to be planned at the moment. So those are our comments. I'm pleased to say that we're, we're just appreciative of the town's hard work on this project. Thank you very much. Uh, Council appreciates the work that the association put into it as well. Thank you. Um, Council, uh, let's turn to Ms. Weiss and Mr. Lambert for advice on what we can add to offer the assurance that drainage will be dealt with um, appropriately. Through your worship, if you turn to page 51 of the agenda, um, it's the Appendix B, items to be dealt with through the subdivision agreement. Condition 7 already sets out criteria that, in my opinion, would address it. But if we wanted to add to this further, um, we could take that statement and add, and to ensure that the adjoining lands continue to drain through the site in general conformance with the functional servicing plan. Thank you. Uh, Ward 3 councillors, uh, do you want to make that change? 
I'm thinking you're the most logical ones. Certainly, I think that strengthens it. And uh, just wondering if Mr. Hall, if you give a nod to the head, is that? We're good. Councillor DeMoff. So given that we've got houses that have had these swales and then 50 years go by and things have happened over those 50 years that nobody knows what's happened. And so if, if we add this to this agreement, if there's, if there's a homeowner 20 years from now, will they be able to come back and require that the drainage still go the way it does now? We won't be stuck in a situation like, where we, like we are now where it's like, well, we don't know who did it, so you're kind of on your own. Through your worship and to our viewing audience that's out there today, I would say time is always of the essence. Uh, certainly there are a number of our bylaws that have time limitation periods that if you ever took them to court, that test would always come into play. So if somebody does find their rear yard all of a sudden is altered by a neighbor, please call us right away so that we can react to what was done. Um, issues where you get into history of somebody changed this years ago, I'm the fourth owner, it gets very complicated. So, so why are we putting swales in then? <laughs> I, 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 like so this probably there, takes, are there <laughs> through your worship, this could take us on a long journey back through time, probably to the early 80s when lot drainage really came into play. Um, set by the Municipal Engineers Association, appropriate way to drain lands and to come up with a lot drainage scheme. Anything prior to that time really didn't have a great plan. Um, so still accommodating drainage through one lot onto another and then into an appropriate receptor device is still the most economical way to develop and drain lands. It is fraught obviously with the challenge of if somebody unknowingly or perhaps knowingly changes or alters their swale, our site alteration bylaw can kick in, but again, time is of the essence for us to be able to go out there and put but, the rectification. But since these are nine new houses, couldn't we require them to have different drainage? Like, couldn't we not require French drains at the back of each one or something that might be foresee years down the road, the swales get filled in and fences and gardens and shrubs and, and then those people that are adjoining it run into problems. So couldn't we require something different than a swale since these are brand new homes? So the drainage plan for this subdivision already introduces, I think six rear lot catch basins into this area plan, okay. which prior to that, this entire school site for the most part drain to one catch basin into the one rear lot. So okay. at most you have two lots draining to one catch basin. I would say that's a significant improvement over what would have been done a while ago. In time. Okay, okay, that's fine, thank you. Councillor Giddings. Further to that, currently the site flows north to south down along the playground and along the school and that is being reversed so the front two-thirds of the lot, three-quarters of the lot, will be flowing down the unnamed road to Charnwood, correct? Further uh, reducing the amount of, the volume of water? Bear with me, I'm gonna step over to the podium. I did anticipate a question like this, so perhaps a graphic would come into play. So your worship and members of council, the site today as it exists, um, as shown by these red arrows here, accommodates drainage from the neighboring lands onto the school lands and does in fact drain from a north to south direction. There is a small sewer system on site today that collects really the parking lot areas of the school, but essentially there's also a large basin in here in the back and quite a swale that runs along the 
the south limit of this property. So all the drainage and runoff that comes from these lands moving from north to south enters into this pipe system and then is carried between two homes out to All Saints Crescent. Um, on a light day when it rains, uh, the water from the parking lot in the school will enter into the pipe system and is carried away quite quietly. Um, if you were to impose a more significant rainfall event on here, um, you may find some pooling that takes place in and around the basin here and you may actually have some minor flooding that takes place as that pipe system's capacity is exceeded. So certainly when you go to redevelop this land, this system wouldn't work well. So, moving ahead. Um, once you create nine lots, there will still be a, as highlighted here in blue, and I'm sorry, my mouse isn't keeping up with me, um, but there's still a minor pipe system that when it rains lightly, the fronts of the lot will drain out to the road, the rear of the lots will drain to these rear catch basins, one here, one here, two down here, and another one here. So the rear of the lots will be kept collected by the rear catch basins, brought out to the main storm sewer, and flow away quite quietly, unbeknownst to most people in the area. Now when it rains heavily, and that pipe system is exceeded, still the front yards will drain out to the road, but as you can imagine, the basins are now full of water, and the flow path will be along the roadway. Uh, it'll come out through the new cul-de-sac and then out to Charnwood and, and down through the subdivision uh, as it should and will not congregate into the back. So the only part that would continue to flow along through here is just the rear yard systems as opposed to the entire site which would have passed through this basin in today's condition. So... Councillor Giddings' comment about this roadway being tilted so that it drains this way is in fact correct. Um, I guess imagine the roadway, if you will. The land is tilted this way today, but in the future the road will be tilted this way so that when a heavy rainfall event happens, the water will sheet out the roadway. But during a minor event, the pipe is actually tipped backwards and will carry it out as it does today. Does that help? We'll have to ask Councillor Giddings. <laughs> that does help. Uh, will there be any remedial work done on the existing catch basin basins down at the south central part of the out of the lot where we have the easement going between the two homes? Yes, there will be a new. Actually, the basin sits here today. There will be a new structure put in here. There will be a new manhole, another new inlet put here, and one more additional inlet put there. So certainly increasing the amount of inlet points. The diameter remains the same? The diameter will remain the same. Uh, again, if you can imagine today, the entire site could drain through here through all rainfall events. In the future, minor storm events will pass through there, major storm events, the flow will split, part will be carried out by the road and part will continue down the pipe. So there's no need to upsize that pipe through there. Great, thank you very much. Councillor no. Thank you, Worship. Um, not specific to this application, but because the issue of swales and um, uh, the issue of drainage from property and alterations there too came up, I want to ask the question uh, because I know that uh, those of us in the north that are dealing with new developments all the time constantly hear this refrain about what's this thing in my backyard and why do I need it, etc. And many get rid of it for various reasons. What are we doing as a municipality to actually educate homeowners to make sure that they understand that there's, there's actually a plan for that landscape feature, that as, as many people think it is, um, uh, so that they're not uh, altering it innocently? Through you, Your Worship, um, I'm pleased to say that aside from the um, information brochure that goes out to new purchasers, I think commencing last year, spring and the fall, in areas of new development, uh, we go out and we have a door hanger that goes on to their door that says, you might be thinking about doing some landscaping and altering your backyard. Um, 
please contact us so that we can have a discussion and you may require permits or there may be features upon your property that need to remain there. That's great. Is, is it possible to send, I'm sure you already sent us all copies in our volumes of paperwork. Is it possible to send another copy along? I'd like to have a copy of that in my files. Yes, I can. All right. Council, would, would one of you accommodate me with a motion to uh, move into a session closed to the public um, as permitted under the Municipal Act for the following purposes? Uh, a matter dealing with uh, A, the security of the property of the municipality, C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality, and F, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Councilor Lapworth, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Madam Clerk, would you clear the chamber of the public so that we can have uh, a meeting, uh, a session closed to the public for these matters? I'll now call the public session back to order. Council has met briefly in a session closed to the public as permitted under the Municipal Act to uh, consider a matter, uh, A, affecting the security of the property of the municipality, uh, also a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality, and advice subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. The matter before us, the, uh, the recommendation uh, report item number five has been duly moved by Councillor Giddings and uh, and Council is confident that when the lots come back before it in the fall we will be able to guarantee that uh, uh, there are measures we will be able to adopt then that will guarantee um, the protection of the drainage as designed and intended. With that I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed if any? And that is carried. Thank you everyone. That brings us to item number six, which is the recommendation report, official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and draft plan of subdivision. And unless my eyes deceive me, it is Rob Thun who will lead us through our summary of this matter that you've all studied so diligently. And that is one long recommendation, Mr. Thun. Uh, thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council. This is the recommendation meeting related to an official plan amendment a zoning bylaw amendment and a draft plan of subdivision application submitted by State View Homes Ivy Oak Estates for the development of 22 unit townhouse project at 2295 and 2307 Calsa Gate. Uh, tonight, your report can be found on page 57 of the agenda. Uh, also, the associated official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment can be found within the bylaw section of page 99 and 105, respectively. The air photo, which is above uh, on the screen, identifies the application area and its context with the surrounding area. And just briefly, you have Brawny Road and Calsa Gate to the west. You have three-story condominium townhouses to the east and to the south. So to the east and to the south. And one detached dwelling to the north. The site is presently designated as low-density residential. The official plan amendment that was submitted is to uh, request a redesignation of the development area to medium density residential, the fitting of the townhouse project. From a zoning perspective, the site is zoned ED, existing development, within bylaw 2014-014. The applicant is seeking a site-specific amendment to RM1, residential medium one, to reflect the proposed townhouse project. On the slide in front of council now, there is the draft plan we're identifying the three blocks and also the development concept associated with uh, the development of those three blocks. Uh, an information meeting was held on February 26 and one member of the public was in attendance. No concerns were raised. The statutory public meeting was held on April 13th of this year. No members of the public uh, spoke at the public meeting. Um, the three blocks as pro are proposed within the draft plan. So you have blocks one, which is for the townhouse units. You have block two fronting on to Calsa Gate. And you also have block three, which will be the future common element condominium roadway. The townhouses are proposed to be three stories consistent with the abutting area. 
Units will front either onto Kalsa Gate, as you can see from the development plan, or the private ro roadway. And the garages will either be in the rear of the units fronting onto Kalsa Gate or in the front for the units backing onto existing uh, townhouse development. As you can see from the development plan and the draft plan, access to the property or to this development is from Calsa Gate. Uh, when it comes to the Calsa Gate itself, staff will be working with the applicant through the site plan process uh, to create the streetscape that has been outlined within the Calsa Gate Oberani Road streetscape plan. So in conclusion, Your Worship, and as you've mentioned already, uh, there are eight recommendations uh, being put forward related to the official plan amendment, to the zoning bylaw amendment, and also to the draft plan of subdivision, and also with regards to notice. So in, in conclusion, Your Worship, uh, staff are putting forth this recommendation uh, for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Thun. Questions? Councillor Elgar. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the presentation, uh, Rob. The, um, there is one property to the north with the single residence. How will it be? Uh, how will we protect headlights from shining into uh, that house? We will be able to deal with that through the site plan process. Um, Mr. Inglehart is aware of this project already, uh, fully aware of it, and through that process, we can uh, figure out a solution to that in the interim. Because as you can see, there is a potential connection to his property to the north. It's, it's quite obvious, and it's pr that's probably a good idea, but for the time being, he has no intentions of moving from there for in, in the foreseeable future, as far as I know. So I'm just thinking in, in the meantime, if it's some kind of a, a barrier so that he wouldn't be negatively impacted. We'll take that under consideration through Thank your you. worship. Thank you, you. Councillor. Is anyone here from the applicant? Mr. Fay, I wonder if we could ask you a question in line with Councillor Elger's concern about Mr. Engelhart. Would you be uh, able to commit to creating a, um, uh, a headlight screen on Mr. Engelhart's property, which appears to me the only way to achieve this? I have no directions this evening, Your Worship, to commit to that, but I can certainly take it back to my client and we do have the site plan process to go through as well, so it can certainly be raised at that point. All right, thank you for your answer. Now, I did want to advise you and members of council that State View Homes is in support of the recommendations before you this evening. Thank you. Councillor Elgar? Councillor Elgar has moved the item. All those in favor? Opposed to Finney? And that does also carry. Uh, It'd now be appropriate to have a motion to rise and report to Council. Councillor Knoll, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Uh, I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent items 1, 2, and 3, confidential consent item C1, public hearing item 4, and discussion items 5 and 6 as noted by the Clerk. Can I have a mover and seconder for the report? Councillor Hutchins and Councillor O'Meara, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that report is adopted. Council, is there any new business of emergency, congratulatory, or condolence nature to be brought forward? Thank you. Then uh, it would be in order to have a mover and seconder for consideration and reading of the bylaws. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Adams, this is the authority for the bylaws as listed in the, excuse me, in the agenda. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The bylaws are hereby adopted. That completes our agenda. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.